Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Exploring the Paranormal. I am super excited to be here, as I always am every Tuesday morning. Uh, so if you're watching today, thank you for being here, and make sure you comment with any questions you have for myself or my guests. Uh, we're going to talk about all things paranormal and anything else that may come up during the show. And also, if you are watching the replay, thank you for catching the replay. Make sure to leave your comments and questions, and I will make sure that either I get answer the question myself or I get the question to my guest so he can get you that answer. So before I continue babbling, like you guys know, I end up doing quite often on this show, I am going to bring in my guest. So welcome, Jay, to the show. It is so glad to finally meet you face to face. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I see Lee is joining us. Hello, Lee. Thank you for joining the show. Uh, one question I do always like to start my guests off in, because not all of my followers always know the different guests that I have, is can you just kind of talk a little bit more about you, what you do, and kind of give insight into what got you into the paranormal? Uh, my name's Jay Hill. I'm, I'm the producer and creator of Studio Six Media Productions. Uh, basically, I started out uh, with a podcast called Studio Six uh, Paranormal, and and for about about three years, uh, uh, it, it was it was a, a learning show. Um, I did a lot with uh, great interviews with a lot of, of uh, great people. I learned a lot with that. Um, I just ended that last. Uh, fall, I do believe, and uh, I went on to create a, a Cemetery Files podcast with Kelly Schaefer, who's my other host, and um, yeah, that's been a really successful show. I've had some, you know, great episodes with that. Um, I also do, um, um, I have a couple other people under my uh, Studio 6 banner, um, Bree Hongshed, is also part of Studio Six. She is uh, paranormal road tripping with Bree. Uh, mm -hmm. If people don't know who that is, you can uh, Google that. Um, so yeah, she's been um, a great supporter of Studio Six, and as well as I am a supporter of her stuff. So um, I also do a audio podcast called Paranormal Triangle with Kelly Schaefer and Dave Taylor from Our Haunted Lives on Paraflix, mm -hmm. and that is. Um, probably a couple times a month, which are really fun shows. Um, I also do, I do paranormal um, psychic walkthroughs for paranormal teams uh, who need a medium in their investigations and are trying to find out other information that they don't or they can't um, access. And I try to fill in the gaps for that, mm -hmm. um, which is something I really enjoy doing. It's all about kind of like helping people and helping paranormal teams and this and that. Um, um, me being um, a medium myself, I I was born that way. <laughs> um, I didn't get into my gifts until later in life after uh, my health scare. I had a stroke in 2013. And after that, um, things kind of changed. And uh, I started really, my gifts really started opening up because I stopped quitting or I stopped uh, drinking and I stopped doing everything and started taking care of myself more. And mm -hmm. my, the fog in my brain kind of cleared up. And so right. I was able to see things in a different way. Um, I am just about to start a book that um, is going to chronicle my life as, as an addict and as a mm -hmm. uh, medium and as, um, you know, just life in general. And some of my experiences um, that coined the, the phrase of paranormal investigator or psychic medium. And mm -hmm. I really, um, paranormal has always been in my life. It's been around me. I, there's no two ways about it. I couldn't, ex you know, escape it. I tried many times, but it was always there and I was always aware of it, you know? And so I always wanted to get more into the paranormal but life in general, just kind of took precedence you know and i just really i really didn't um know how to go about it until later on and once i realized uh, the path i was on was not the right path and now i i believe that i'm on the right path and mm -hmm. i try to maintain that the best way i do i deal with my depression i deal with seasonal depression i do you know i i've dealt with all these being a, a sensitive and a medium um my emotional um, 
rank is pretty high because I am sensitive to a lot of different emotional things that are around me. So mm -hmm. it's battle at times, but um, you know, I I try to keep my circle small. I try to uh, surround myself with people who who are supportive, lifting as well as um, good friends, family, you know, and uh, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, definitely let me know when that book comes out because I want to read that. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, definitely. hopefully it'll so, come out. I'm hopeful. Hopefully it'll come out um, next year. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So I I'm to get, from experience, book writing. It, it takes a while, so you take your time on it, make it perfect, um, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's it's going to be great. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. And um, I know I'm going to have you on a future show. We're still setting the dates for it about podcasters. Uh, but one question I did mm -hmm. have that I get a lot, which is why I'm hosting that special show, is a lot of people want to know how could they set up their own podcast. Um, are there any tips, advice? You know, whether it's paranormal or not paranormal. That, like I said, that seems to be the number <coughs> one question. I get. Um. The best advice I could, could give people who are just starting a podcast is to keep it simple. You know, you don't have to go out and get all the expensive equipment. You don't have to, you know, do it out of your, off your laptop. Um, you know, some people who really want to go all into it, you know, feel free to, you know, buy what you want to buy. You know, if you can afford it, sure. You know, but it's, it's really a keeping it simple is when you start out and, you know, just making it so that it it's, you know, the clarity of your audio and, you know, what you're going to talk about and what your topic mm -hmm. is. And, um, you know, just basically don't overthink everything. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like you're going to roll up a, a desk like Jimmy Fallon and you're going to interview somebody. It's, you know, do, these things take time. Mm -hmm. So keeping it simple, starting it, starting it small, and then, you know, kind of work your way up. You're going to learn mm -hmm. in the ins and outs. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have glitches. You're going to have, you know, so those are all to be expected. So don't get discouraged. Mm -hmm. that, that almost sounds like the same advice I offer investigators when they're just getting into the field when it comes to all the tech that they can choose from. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot of the tech that's out there now especially for the paranormal. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of, you know, pick and choose, you know. Mm -hmm. Or like I usually like to do is um, I, I use my own gifts and my my body as my tuning fork, so to speak, you know. There's a yeah. few things that I use. I mean, there's stuff that I have in cases that I, I just need to get rid of because I, I don't ever use them, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I could probably make a car payment with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I tend to stick with my, you know, like you said, myself and then non-tech tools. I, I like the dousing mm -hmm. rods, the pendulums, and then, of course, yep. digital voice recorder and video camera. So that way you can document mm -hmm. whatever happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. So now switching gears into the medium aspect of it. Um, I know when it comes to psychic abilities, that's one thing I know I have, but I've suppressed mm -hmm. mine just because I love to research. So yeah. I, I, I don't want to use, you know, my psychic abilities going in and having done all this research because I just don't think that's fair because I have insight into stuff. So when it comes mm -hmm. to research, do you do any research or do you let someone else do that for you? I let somebody else do that. <laughs> I don't do anything. Yeah. Especially right. if it's if it's somebody that if it's somebody that, that uh, wants to basically, quote, hire me, so to speak, to do mm -hmm. a walkthrough. Um, or a virtual walkthrough or something like that. I don't want to know anything. I don't want right. to, you know, and the validation for that is just that that is payment enough, you know, to make sure mm -hmm. that it lines up with what it is. You know, right. um, I have my host, my other host on the cemetery files, Kelly Schaefer. Mm -hmm. She's a researcher. She also has gifts, but um, when she does research and she does ancestral research, She's had history where ancestors have come to her and said, that's wrong. That's right. That's wrong. Don't know where mm -hmm. you got that from, you know? <laughs> so she's actually found, you know, shed some light on some uh, ancestral uh, researches that she's done for people and where okay. they later on found out that what they thought they, they didn't know 
they were able to actually document what they told her, you know, or, to, or told them, you know. So, yeah, it's 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 just different, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I, right. I I don't like to I'll, I like to do research, but I it's, I kind of feel like I'm short sighting myself if I do too much research, you mm -hmm. know. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, that's always been one of those things where it's like, um, that's um, it's because I'm prior to doing actually in the beginning of my paranormal, I was a journalist. So I was always mm -hmm. deep diving and researching and it's kind of, you know, you know, natural for me to do that type of thing. And I, I do have experiences when I go on investigations where it's like, oh, you know, it, it's, you know, an experience that I have that matches up with the research. But then I think in the back of my head, am I having this experience because I did the research? <laughs> so it's right. That, Right. That's right, why I right. just don't even use my abilities whatsoever. No. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now, um, being in this field, especially, you know, for the research and all this stuff that you do, um, mm -hmm. your gifts are, are going to probably eventually going to want to come more forward than you realize. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it's like, it's like, it's kind of, you got to look at it this, this way. It's like stopping, uh, a bunch of like a tidal wave with a dam that's built with sticks mm -hmm. okay so it, it's it's going to eventually come through more so and i've had that happen to me you know mm -hmm. i didn't want to necessarily adhere to the gifts that i had and mm -hmm. i was afraid more or less of what society would say family would say and all that so it was kind of like it's a battle for anybody that's mm -hmm. out there that has that have gifts or think that you have gifts, you know, research, do your research, mm -hmm. you know, find a mentor. I had one and yeah, it just, you know, mm -hmm. there's different steps and things that you can do that can, you know, make yourself feel more assured instead of I'm um, mm -hmm. crazy. No, you're not crazy. Right. It's just, it's <laughs> a normal, it's a normal thing, especially nowadays. Everything is upside down. So why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Yep, especially if it brings you comfort, because I know I've yep. had some experiences that have nothing to do with any paranormal research or anything that have brought me comfort. Mm -hmm. so. Right. It's a it's an emotional. Fe it's a feeling that, you know, it's not so much yeah. that you you think about it or, you know, it's 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 more of a knowing than a, a feeling. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that I think that's why my Wednesday show that I host, Ghost Education 101, we work so well because Philip is a psychic medium. So he takes that side of it and I take the research side mm -hmm. of it when we do our shows. So it, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a good fit to have the, the mix like that, too. And I mean, going back to the feeling, I mean, like I said, it's, it was an experience that I had, oh, geez, 2018 is um, mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with stage five kidney failure. And my grandfather oh, wow. came to me one night and said, it's not your time. Right. And ever since then, I've like never had surgery, never had any treatment for it. And now I'm free and clear of it. So nice. it, it's, it's amazing Congrats. how, That's... you know, oh, thanks. And I view that as a combination of the psychic abilities because no one else in my family has seen them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was right. one of those, did he come to me because he knew I needed it or because he knew I could see him? Right, right. I think it's probably a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, that would be my opinion. But uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. just if people need to realize that it's spiritual paths are, are something to adhere to. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, when you get sucked in the world and you get sucked in what's going on in the outside and society and all this other stuff, it's kind of like. Man, you know, my 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 wife went to Kenya for a couple of weeks or a month or something like that years ago. Mm -hmm. And when she come back, she said everything changed. Everything. Nobody cares about the things we care about here. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't worry about the people driving down the street with road rage. They don't care about that. They don't. Everything was so simple that she just, you know, and it it's true. I mean, you, you, you take the society out of you and then you kind of go with inside yourself, you know, surround yourself with the things that are going to help your brain and help your, your mind and your, mm -hmm. your sense of peace. And yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. We had a similar experience. We went to, oh, no, I'm trying to remember which country, but it was in Mexico 
And we mm-hmm. took a we took a cruise there. And one of our shore excursions took us up into the mountains to a small village that had a, like a population twenty. And they didn't mm-hmm. even have a town doctor. The town doctor would come to the town square once a month and treat everybody. And it had this cute little old church, but just meeting the, I mean, the residents would come out and greet us and they were just laid back. They loved being in the middle of nowhere. And it was such a peaceful feeling being there. I didn't want to leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. It's those feelings that people need to adhere to. You know, when you mm-hmm. find that somewhere, when you're out and about or whatever, if you, if you can try to harness that feeling and try to just Mm -hmm. internalize that and find out when you go home, try to find out how can you replicate that? Because that's, Mm -hmm. that's evidently that's something that your body needs or that your body can, you know, grow from. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Actually, we do have a quick question on the topic that we are on is what happens when you can see and predict things like death? And you don't want that gift. And when you tell someone what you see or know, you're rarely wrong. It depends. Um, I I have not been able to predict death. I don't. That is one of the one of the things that I don't do is I am not one to predict somebody's death or see somebody die. Or I've had a premonition of something where somebody you know will eventually go but Mm -hmm. i had an aunt that i knew that was gonna die and i that that feeling and when the phone rang i knew what it was but that was a teenager Mm -hmm. right you know and that is the research that somebody needs to do if you want to Mm -hmm. research what happens if by predicting things like death and this and that if that's something that is part of your forte or your gift then research it you know mm-hmm. i i don't predict things like death i basically if i give somebody a reading and i'll say that i see things in your future or i'll see things coming up soon and certain dates not to say mm-hmm. what it is um i usually get a, a good feeling of uh, happiness or whatever sorrow and death i'm not privy to those things Mm-hmm. I'm I've never I never have been and maybe that's something that I asked not to be privy to you know what I mean mm-hmm. right so. yeah and I know I know for me the closest that I've come to anything like that a lot of my stuff comes to me it starts off in dreams and then carries out through the rest of the day right and mm-hmm. I remember one night my youngest son he was only six months old and he's 20 now but I had a dream that I didn't know who it was but it was a significant male figure in my life had passed away and mm-hmm. I woke up immediately and called my mom to see, you know, if my mm-hmm. dad was okay, because that was the only person I could think of. And then later that night, my uncle, who is my godfather, passed away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just, it, it like, it almost scared me, the fact that the two went hand right. in hand and were so close to each other as far as happening. Mm-hmm. But it's not something that you predicted. It's just something right. that you experienced after the fact. And right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I've had that yeah. happen as well. I mean, I mm-hmm. um I had a dream. Well, it was yeah, it was it was a dream, and uh my friend's dad had passed away. I knew he was sick, but I lived mm-hmm. in two states away, and I knew he was sick, and he always had to have blood transfusions and because he was diabetic and you know he was it was just really bad. I didn't know how bad because I hadn't seen mm-hmm. him in years, but he came to me in a dream and said, I want to thank you, you know, for your friendship with uh, my son and you know the family and you know coming to us all the time and you know this and that mm-hmm. da, da, da. and it was just an acknowledgement of friendship and saying thank you for being there for my family for this or that whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Right. When I and I didn't know, I, but then uh, like a month later, I went to go visit my friend, and that's when he told me that when he died was the time that I had that dream was when he died. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I've had a couple of those after the facts. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I'm I'm not too keen on predicting things, especially right. death. And just I'm more or less um. You know, if it's something that's positive that's coming up, you know what I mean? Because I think death Mm -hmm. is a private entity all its own. Yeah. And I don't think that mediums should have that ability to 
predict or, you know, give a message. Oh, I think you're going to die. Or I think that, you know, you know, this person says this, or I, you know, I don't think that that is adequate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that right. as, as mediums, we are supposed to, you know, give positive messages and give things, you know, if there's something that's going to happen that, that, that person is, should watch out for. Yes, I agree that mm -hmm. health issues or whatever, you know, to try to help prevent something getting worse. I could see that. But as far as death, that is a private moment for every individual. And yeah, I just, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I asked this question of one of my guests a couple of weeks ago is when you're out and about doing just your own daily errands and stuff like that, have you ever had whether a premonition or a feeling and it was about someone you were near that you had no clue who this person was? Did you ever feel like you had to tell them what you knew or do you just kind of go on and um, mind your own business? I am. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not like Long Island medium. <laughs> um, I have been in, um, I have been in, in places before because a, a lot of the people don't understand too, is that most mediums usually ask for permission to read somebody mm -hmm. because right. it, it's, it's, it's an invasion of privacy you go up to somebody and you say, Oh, can I tell you something? You know, and I see this or I see that number one, you didn't ask that person for that, ex mm -hmm. that approval because when mediums read into people, they could see a lot of different things. And maybe people are private. Maybe people are just like, you know what? I don't want to be read. I don't want to, you know, and I ran into people like that and that's totally fine. But mm -hmm. if you go up to somebody and you say, you know, is there some way that I can give you a reading? I, I, you know, I, 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 I'm just, I think I have a message for you if you're willing to accept it. If you're not, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. That way it kind of kind of clears out the I don't know the negative, I guess, but you know, I mean it's just it's just different. But I have mm -hmm. coworkers and friends that I'll invade their space all day long. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'll right. be, you know, I'll be I'll be saying this, that, and the other thing. And then they they freak out because they're like, Oh my god, you're looking into me. Stop, you know, because <laughs> I'll know if they're if they're upset or if they're, you know or she's having a rough, having a rough day at work or whatever. And, and I'll kind of, you know, you know, bring up certain things and she's like, Oh, how do you know that? Or she'll never mind. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's one thing to do with friends and coworkers and things that your people you're close to, but strangers is that's a whole different story unless they've asked yeah. for it. Or unless it's something that they're, you know, that they're going to be open to it. You still need to mm -hmm. ask permission. Right. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's funny when you're talking about friends and family and reading them, I get a friend of mine, he's in South Carolina and every couple of weeks I'll get a message. Are you okay? And it's always on a day that I'm having a bad day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I'm like, how do you always know to check in on me when I'm having a bad day? He's like, the spirits tell yeah. me. <laughs> it's yeah. Just... Yeah. My, my co-host so Kelly like... does the same thing when I call her and, and if I'm going through one of my spells or whatever, she's, she'd be like, what are you doing? You know, it's not, hey, how you doing? It's, what are you doing? You know, and it's like, you know, <laughs> she chooses not to use her gifts in a way. Um, she's a researcher, you know, and she mm -hmm. she has different uh, views on what she does. Mm -hmm. So she just, yep. you know what I mean? But yeah, so, but she knows when I'm connected with, you know, mediums, no mediums. And I'm just going to mm -hmm. say that, you know, I'll, I could tell you who the, who's this, who's that, you know what I mean? Because. It's just like a connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And um, before we move on to more um, paranormal and locate, because I also want to talk about some different locations you've been to, is as far as your abilities, do you do any type of psychometry or remote viewing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I Both. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> how I got my last job. <laughs> okay. Right. And yeah. then um, the last... I, I'm sorry, one more question on that one, but have you ever had a case or a reading with someone that had you questioning why you still do this, whether it upset you or, you know, because I know I've had clients in the paranormal field that have made me so sad because we couldn't help them mm -hmm. that it made me want to give up doing clients. <laughs> right. Let me ask, let me, you ask that question one more time because you were kind of cutting mm -hmm. out. 
Oh, sorry about that. Has there ever been a time where you've done a reading or worked with somebody that it was either so depressing, so sad or so scary that made you oh, want yeah. to stop doing what you do? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I don't. I used to have a paranormal team called um, Wisconsin Paranormal Research, and I I learned a lot to the short time that I had that team. And I basically realized through a trial and error what I did not want to do, which was mm -hmm. I ch I choose now. I, I do not do home investigations, residential investigations, because of the fact that, number one, it's a personal place, a personal um, safe place for people. I just don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've ran into a couple different ones where um, these people were just trying to basically trap or trick the paranormal team to come there because of the fact they thought it was fun mm -hmm. and they thought it was, you know, this or that and everything. So I just, um, I've ran into places where um, there was something very negative there that I didn't want to subject myself to. So mm -hmm. I just, I, I choose to do uh, businesses, buildings, land, um, you know, parks, stuff like that. Home residences, that's probably the only thing that I choose not to do anymore. Unless it's a remote view. If it's a remote view that I'm not there, that's different. Putting my physical mm -hmm. essence someplace and doing it that way is opening myself up. Even though I'm protected as much as I am, it's still, there's still a danger there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Doing it from right. a distance, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we've stopped doing residential cases for three, three main reasons for us. Um, completely different than yours to a point, but we've, um, after being in a documentary, um, uh, cause my, my paranormal team is my family. So we were mm -hmm. featured as a family of investigators in a documentary. Um, we went to a location and they asked me where my film crew was thinking that the film crew goes everywhere with us. And it's like, they don't follow us everywhere we go. <laughs> we filmed with them right. for two weeks and we were done. <laughs> right. Um, second, I had a client on the phone no paranormal activity whatsoever in her home. We felt she was self-manifesting it. And mm -hmm. she was just 75 year old woman on the phone crying with me. I'm not crazy. Completely broke my heart. I was like, I can't do this again. <laughs> she, she yeah, completely yeah, yeah. Broke I, my heart. Yeah. I, I ran, I have ran into that once. Uh, and it was similar. It was nothing mm -hmm. that, you know, that I, I really couldn't, I mean, we went there and we tried to take care of the best we could, but if they mm -hmm. had more activity, the one person, the, the person that was part of the reason why there was activity in the house was because the child was gifted. Mm -hmm. And I saw that a long time ago. And mm -hmm. um, that was another grandmother who called me on the phone and had said, uh, you know, this is going on, this is going on. And I talked to her for about five, 10 minutes. And then I got off the phone with her. And that was, this is the first time I ever got a, a ghost text where mm -hmm. I had a text on my phone after I hung up the phone with her and the voice or the text said, can you help us or can you help me? And I was, I thought she was wanting to converse more. So I called her back and she said, I said, did you need something else? She goes, no. And so I got a text saying, asking for your help. And, and she said, no, my phone's been sitting here next to me. While I'm watching TV. I'm okay. And then I realized who it was. Mm hmm. And then yeah. we helped and this and that, but the activity was still going on. There wasn't much left that we could really do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and so we did everything that we thought we possibly could, but, you know, you, you yeah. and that's another thing too. The you know, spirit says to me, you, you can't help everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's some people that you can't help that just need a different path. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or you could try to set them on the path, but maybe it's somebody else that's supposed to help them. You know, you can pray for them, you can do whatever, but you know, there's sometimes where people need outside help or somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not going to be you. And a lot of people right. don't realize that you can't save everybody. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Yeah. And I know she's still, this case, she's still trying to find, it's been three years. Because we ended mm -hmm. the case just before we moved from Nevada to Florida. And she um, 
she's still looking for a team that's willing to help her. And they, you know, reach out to me and I give them some of the information that I have. And I tell them, you know, hey, go investigate to see if you get. But we were there twice. And we had no evidence whatsoever, except for we did get an EVP that was in her voice that said, get out. Mm -hmm. But the video camera was filming her and she didn't move her mouth at the time we got the get out and it was in her voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but wow. other than that, there was, yeah, I, mean, ran, no. I ran, <clears throat> I ran, I ran into, to, um, doppelgangers before, mm -hmm. you know, I ran into yeah. annoying at, at, at best is what they are sometimes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 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 So where are, out of all the places so, that you do investigate, oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, I saw that somebody said spirit with a cross, spirit with a cross on oh. Jay's cap. Yeah. Is that what it says? Yep. Huh. Okay. I just, I couldn't read it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I've investigated quite a few different places not a lot but um there's been i'm from a, a small town in wisconsin and it's mm -hmm. uh it's a resort town it's got a nice lake you know and the building that i used to do my first podcast show was in a boutique ho is was in a boutique hotel that was the one of the first buildings built in the town mm -hmm. and it was like kind of like a mansion and it was in, from 1856. And so I pretty much kind of made myself a custom of the spirits there and ran into quite a few of them on a different occasion and actually had a friend of mine do a remote view on a TikTok once where she picked out everything I, <laughs> I had known already, which was really mm -hmm. kind of cool. But there's some other places that, um, I visited, there's been a couple um, buildings that used to be like the Saint Asylum that was a small building in town. And mm -hmm. um, I've gone to a couple different places that basically were just downtown, like businesses, you know what I mean? Right. And mm -hmm. I'm more of a, if people call me, if people need my help, then yeah, I'm there. I kind of, when I gave up doing paranormal investigation for my my team that i disbanded a few years ago i just i felt like it wasn't what i was supposed to do you know mm -hmm. i've been to other things uh, i'm invited that's 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 great you know but i don't actively go out and seek them mm -hmm. just because i just don't feel that's what i need to do right yeah you know? yep yeah everyone has their own path and in, in this field which is one of the reasons why i love it yeah, Lee wants yeah. to know what town in Wisconsin, because she's from Wisconsin. Lake Geneva. That's what I was thinking mm. you were talking about. I live yeah, there every yeah. <laughs> summer. I, I grew up in Woodstock, yeah. Illinois. Okay. All right. So and we, yeah, we my, lived my in dad Lake was Geneva born in <laughs> my dad was born in Woodstock, actually. Yeah, okay. My dad was born there. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah, Wisconsin's got a lot of different weird, strange stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yep. And mm -hmm. I noticed a lot of people I have on my show are from there. I, I know um, yeah. uh, Barnaby Jones and Resnick no. are from Wisconsin, I believe. Lee, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> but because they, they have Wisconsin Caps is the name of their, and they do cryptid research. Oh, wow. Yeah, the the... The Mark Joe show that that was the first podcast I was ever on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, those guys were really cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Oh, I didn't even know some of the Bigfoot Beach Lake State Park. Yeah, that's right. Five minutes from my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I actually work yeah. at Bigfoot Country Club. The prize of okay. private Bigfoot Country Club. That mm -hmm. has a lot of activity and it's on Native American land. And yeah, it's just, that's how I got the job. I remote <laughs> viewed it years ago when I was on my team. Mm 
mm-hmm. my Wisconsin Paranormal Research, somebody called me and said, you need to check out this country club, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, call them and find out. While she was calling it, I, I was remote viewing what that place looked like on the inside. And I saw mm-hmm. the pillars, I saw the windows, and I saw a man in a corner standing there with a dark brown suit on and a hat. I'm like, oh, nice. Fast forward three years later, I'm going to work at another place and a new job. And I had the job. Everything was like hunky dory. And then the last minute, the lady said the chef didn't seem to think that you were a good fit. Thanks for your time. And then I was like, (laughs) okay. So (laughs) when I talked to another medium friend of mine, um, Susan Hill, who's not no relation, but she's a good friend. And uh, she said, I see that you're going to someplace that's surrounded by Native Americans. And at that time, I didn't I hadn't even applied to that job yet. And then mm-hmm. she said, oh, yeah, she's like, yeah, it's it's a good, this is where you're supposed to be. I'm like, OK. So then I got the phone with her. I looked on Indeed, found this place, didn't put two and two together until I got the interview. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the interview, I was standing in the same spot that I remote viewed three years prior Mm -hmm. and saw the pillars, the windows and the whole nine yards. And I'm like, Oh, wow. And so, (laughs) yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, That almost um, reminds me, uh, deja vu, deja vu is, do you, yeah. Is it one of those things where it, I'm still like torn on what it actually is. I know it's the feeling that you've been somewhere before, but could you have that feeling because you either accidentally remote viewed and didn't know it type of thing or just, you know, a past life, I guess. Um, maybe past life, but mm-hmm. um, deja vu for me causes me major anxiety. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, in other words, it's kind of like it's kind of like having a panic attack. Mm-hmm. And I don't it's it I've ever since I had my stroke, every time that I would get deja vu like that, it would cause me ma- a major panic attack. Before mm-hmm. that, I just would recognize it and say, "Oh, that's weird." But mm-hmm. this time, it, now it's just like, yeah, I have to completely just stop and focus on something else because mm-hmm. it just it does for some reason it having that or knowing it's coming and i'm like okay i'm this is something that i'm going to be familiar with and then i have to try to focus myself out of it because i don't want nothing to do with deja vu (laughs) nope Mm -mm. yeah it it is a weird feeling especially when it feels very real like like you know almost like you have tactile experiences in that location in the past you've never been there right that i've actually been where when i go to certain places like that um And I get that it's not deja vu for me. It's my, I feel beside myself. Like there's two of me. Mm -hmm. What happens is when I walk into a building and I feel separated, disconnected, like part of my spirit is like standing next to me and I'm standing Mm -hmm. here and I'm like, I've either been there or I've experienced something in here, or I know somebody in here that has ran, you know, ran across me Mm -hmm. in this life or last life or also, if there's if I if I would go into a friend's house or somebody's house that had a lot of negative activity like um, abuse, mm-hmm. that also causes me to step outside myself because it's a negative mm-hmm. emotion that just affects me, stress right. and yeah. anger and frustration and abuse and all that stuff. It's just, it's kind of like I'm removing myself from that because it's 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 almost like getting out of the way. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's almost like somebody's shooting a gun at you, but it's full of uh, negative emotions. And you're like, mm-hmm. nope, nope, I'm going to sidestep that. And that's exactly the way it feels. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So with all of the things that you do, um, whether it's the mediumship, paranormal investigations, um, all of it lumped together, what is your favorite part about what you do? Helping people. Mm-hmm. Helping people find answers um inspiring people um helping people realize that they are worth more than they give themselves credit you mm-hmm. know so it's not in the paranormal per se but it just as a person you know the paranormal is just to me is just something else i do and mm-hmm. i really appreciate all the people that 
that do support me and studio six and all my stuff so um but if it's one thing it's just helping mm -hmm. yep exactly yeah and, and i view it the same way whether you're training someone Mm -hmm. with you know information and or you know helping them with a case or anything like that it's it's always it's a good feeling oh. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yep. The, the other good feeling i always say is when you bring someone who's a skeptic with you and they experience their first paranormal encounter and they're no longer a skeptic <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the, um, the look yeah, on their I, face is priceless <laughs> i've got a few of those friends that i've taken um to an investigation um, and still, um, the skeptic, oh, a friend of mine, um, he he went through the list of things that it could have possibly, and then he was still, days later, it could have been this, could have been this, and it really racked his brain. He didn't understand mm -hmm. what had happened, mm -hmm. you know, but yep. um, yeah, uh, I'll just real quick story with him. We mm -hmm. went to an investigation, and he had never been on an investigation before. He's a good friend of mine, and he's a big skeptic. And um, he didn't really run into anything per se, but um, on his phone that was in his pocket that was off, random text of gibberish came through and was sending it to another friend of his. And then he hadn't messaged him in weeks Mm -hmm. And couldn't figure out what it was. And it wasn't. How did that happen? So he right. was, he's still trying to wrap his head around that. Mm -hmm. And I think it could have been something. Could have been something paranormal. I don't know. But it's one thing like mm -hmm. that, that it scratched. It's the person who's a skeptic scratched their head more so. You know what I mean? So. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I think my dad's the same way because he always he supported what I did, but he was always skeptical and just never wanted to hear any of the stories that I had to share. And then I want to say it was around the time that his mother died. My grandmother died. He's all of a sudden started asking me questions. How does this happen? Why would this happen? Um, he read all of my books that I've written so far and then talks about them to me. And it, it mm -hmm. kind of makes me wonder if he had an experience <laughs> that Could kind be. of as I'm asking mm -hmm. questions, but he just doesn't want to admit that he had an experience because he's always right. been. The, There's a lot of those closet experience people, you know, mm -hmm. that have had experiences, but right. dare not speak of it because <laughs> right. of the repercussions or the, I told you so's or anything mm -hmm. like that. And there's, and that's fine. You know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, you know, and it's mm -hmm. an in individual choice, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm still trying to get the nerve to outright ask him. <laughs> <laughs> but I just kind of let him, you know, he, he's interested. He's asking questions now and he's even going into coming up with different theories. So mm -hmm. he's like, maybe we should test this theory. <laughs> right. Right. Almost like he's trying to find the answers. Right. Yeah. So, okay. And um, I'm trying to think we have about 15 minutes left. So do you have any projects coming up? Cause I think we had talked at one point and you had said that, you had some things in the works, but I didn't know if you were able to talk about anything yet. Um, yeah. Um, I'm working on a documentary, which is a, a historical, like an old West documentary. Um, it's mm -hmm. called um, Pioneer and Bloodshed. It's Ooh. basically um, the, the negative evil spirits or the, the disgruntled spirits of the old West, you know, which there's plenty of them and mm -hmm. there's certain places that I would like to go to investigate and to experience and to try to document. Um, but I wanted people to kind of learn a little bit, some of the history that wasn't spoken of, you know, mm -hmm. and if I could get some of that through some of my uh, readings, the buildings or the land or whatever, and people can try to document that that's part of the reason why I want to do that. I had a couple campaigns going it really didn't go anywhere, which is fine. Uh, maybe it's just not the right time, but um, I I do want to be able to make this um, documentary because I want to be able to make create this documentary with Studio Six Media Productions, and I want to be able to create uh, uh, like a documentary in the Old West, uh, like the Civil War, 
um, mm-hmm. other traumatic events or things about in history, you know, that I want to try to document on a different side of the view of what happened there instead of just the standard of what people are, you know, reporting or just saying, you know, you could narrow, narrow, um, narrowly just keep everything simple and say, okay, this is for a good documentary, but I want to be able to kind of go beyond that. I want to be able to to talk about things that people necessarily don't want to talk about, but it's part of history. And so, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the projects that I'm working on and that's, it's a big project. And, uh, yeah, the other project I still can't talk about because we're still working on it. Me and Kelly are still kind of putting it all together. And once it gets together, probably in the next couple of months, we'll be able to make an announcement about it. Um, but yeah, and it, that goes back to helping, you know. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Well, for those of you watching, we still have a few minutes. If you have any questions, get them in now. And um, one last question I do have for you is um, I know you had talked about. Um, advice for someone starting a podcast, but what kind of advice could you offer someone who's um, newly coming into their abilities? Um, that goes back to research, you know, research mm-hmm. what you want to know about what your, what your intentions or your intuition is telling you what, mm-hmm. how you feel or how you think, what Avenue do you want to go and explore? And, you know, Uh, Find people that support that idea of whatever you want to research, you know, um, Mm -hmm. find a mentor, find somebody who is in like minded, who is is like minded and who is going to be very supportive of you. Um, There are a lot and I mean a lot out there right now, which I call armchair mediums, Mm kind of like armchair quarterbacks. Okay, (laughs) now I'm not naming any names. I'm just saying that that is something that is kind of plagued the media mediumship um, group right now. I mean, mm-hmm. the world because of the fact that everybody wants to be a media. Everybody wants that's well and good, but if your intention is to just make money, you're in the wrong business because mm-hmm. that is not what mediumship is. Mediumship is not to make money. Make money. But it's not your sole purpose. If this is, oh, I'm going to tell this person this, and he's going to pay me this. He's For those people that are just trying to do that, you're going to be surprised. Because what comes around goes around. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But (laughs) for people who are researching and trying to find out, you know, more about themselves, look into yourself. Look into yourself and try to find out what it is that either a makes you happy or B, uh, what direction you want to go for something, you know, like to help people or to help a location or something like that. And then just kind of keep notes, keep a diary, keep a journal, document your, your journey. in this, if you're just exploring your gifts, then you just want to, you want to keep that in a journal because you never know. It may make for a good book someday. And it may mm-hmm. help somebody else who's years down the line may read that book and say, I wondered how to get this started. You know, I wondered about this mm-hmm. and that. And for some reason, that person wrote that book and voila, you know. Yep. So. exactly. And then um, one question I do like to ask people, but I always forget to ask on most shows is what are your thoughts? This is a highly debated topic. Um, what are your thoughts on orbs? <laughs> um, take them or leave them. Yep. I, you know, we did a episode on Paranormal Triangle mm-hmm. um, with Kelly Schaefer and Dave Taylor um, about orbs. That was our first show. Um, mm-hmm. um, it's 50-50 for me. You know, I mean, I, I've ran into some, some different things I can't explain. Mm-hmm. Um, I've ran into a lot of dust, a lot of bugs, a lot of different things. But there have been certain times we recently had on our last show that we did about haunted playgrounds on Paranormal Triangle. Dave, David, in his office, he had something there that looked like it didn't look like dust. Mm-hmm. It looked didn't look like an orb. It looked like it had it looked like a dust bunny, but it wasn't. Okay, right. 
because his wife cleans really well. And <laughs> so, yeah, he says, and Kelly saw it. My other host saw it too. And mm -hmm. I couldn't explain what it was. We'll come to find out that it was more or less, there was somebody there from an event that happened um, that somebody was kind of watching over things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and Kelly got the same thing. So I'm right. 50, 50, you know, Yeah. I'm not going to yep. just say for the most part, it's, I would say 80%, 85%. It's probably dust, you know, mm -hmm. or even 90% yep. is probably dust, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm still on the fence to a point, but I, unless I see it with my own eyes, I'm mm -hmm. still kind of very skeptical on video and photography right. aspect of it, but mm -hmm. I've seen one. It was mm -hmm. in Gettysburg. It was flying over triangular field. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was this big bright green orb that looked, you know, probably big enough to be two full humans in that mm -hmm. size, just kind of floating across the field. And it was, it was very right. interesting, mm -hmm. but yeah. Photo yeah, I, and video I, I can't, I can't, yeah, side. I can't, yeah, I can't rule it out. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can, but it's just easier it's easier to take that high the high road with that because mm -hmm. like i said 85 90 percent of the time it is dust right <laughs> but you know there's a small percentage yeah that you can't mm -hmm. explain mm -hmm. i've got yep. one on on a, a picture of one from the mansion in, in lake geneva here that when we did an investigation that i snapped a picture of it and there was no reflective surfaces or no nothing and this thing had color and substance and mm -hmm. it wasn't yep. dust. Right. So, yeah. you know, I just said I'm 50-50. Right. No, you, you can you can definitely tell that it's dust. I haven't had, you mm -hmm. know, they all have the same type of format. They, when you mm -hmm. zoom in and people say they see faces, you can see that it's like, you know, the composition mm -hmm. of the either the pollen or something like that. But, or you can see right. the legs of the bugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, right. But yeah. When you can't rule out the, you know, the standard checklist, you know, are there legs or this or this, 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 and this, right. then it's right. the, right. you know, what could it be? Mm -hmm. And that's the glorious thing about today's, you know, society and life is we all have opinions and they're mm -hmm. just opinions. Right. You know, it's not set in stone, mm -hmm. you know, and anybody that wants to argue over orbs, <laughs> find a better topic. Yep. <laughs> I've found, I've left so many groups because that's all the group was. It was just, you know, arguing over orbs. And it's like, you know, it, it's, I don't even give my opinion on them anymore. <laughs> no, no, I don't really either. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, and it's funny too, because every guest I've had on, they have similar answers, but they're all a little bit differently. So it's, it's funny mm -hmm. how everyone has their own. And that's, that's one of the topics in this field that is, I guess, you know, debated so I guess angrily. <laughs> yeah. Everybody is different. That's what everybody mm -hmm. needs to realize is that we are not all searching for the same exact thing. Other people mm -hmm. are doing ITC. Other people are doing EVPs. Other people are doing orbs. Other people are doing spirit photography. You know, there's so many different facets in the paranormal world that, you know, yeah, we're all looking for the truth or the proof or something. And a lot of people have found certain things here and there, but it's not a, it's not a science. Some people are trying to make it a science so where it gets a little bit more organized. That's fine, but everybody mm -hmm. is different. Everybody right. has different opinions. It, it's not yep. any use to fight about it. <laughs> I know we need to go back to the old uh, respect, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. I'm trying to I, I don't want to say right. accept everybody because, you know, that's. Yeah, we should right, to right, a point, right. but you can't blindly right. accept people. Right, right. Yeah, people are different, so they're going to do what they want to do. And if you don't like that, then don't interact. Right. That's free will. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in Facebook, yeah. you're not forced to be in that group. <laughs> right. You're not forced to stop and look at that page. How dare you? Know. You know? How dare they make me do that? Uh, so right. we're going to start closing up, but do you have any way that people can contact you, find you, get inform more information about what um, you're doing? Yeah, people can find me on uh, Studio 6 Media Productions on Twitter or X, um, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me there. Uh, 
You can find me on anywhere you do your get your podcast. You can find the Studio Six Media Productions or the Paranormal Triangle with Dave Taylor and um, Kelly Schaefer. Um, or you can find us on the Cemetery Files page on Facebook as well as Instagram. Um, anybody that wants to contact me or to find out for more information on my diet documentary, you can send me a an email at spiritual realms 0101 at gmail.com and we can talk about it jd.hill on facebook so yeah i think that's pretty much where i'm at right now perfect and when i upload the replay tomorrow on youtube i'll make sure to include all of that in the description and then i'll also share that information on exploring the paranormal page so people can see that and know how to follow mm -hmm. what you're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you for being on the show today. I truly had a great conversation and it's funny. I think right. we've been friends on Facebook for years, but we've never really talked yeah. face to face. I know. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> how, that's the funny thing about Facebook. Your friends yeah. you never knew you had. <laughs> I know exactly. So it was definitely great having you and thank you everybody for well, watching. Thank Make you. Sure you. Oh, yes. And um, yeah, make sure you follow us on Exploring the Paranormal Show and you can catch the replay on Heather Lee PhD um, over there on YouTube. And then February 20th, or sorry, that should say February 27th, um, I will have Russell Reynolds on the show as my guest. So join us next week for our show. He has some interesting things to talk about. And I believe he is a cousin of Ed and Lorraine Warren is what he said when I talked to him briefly before booking him. So again, Jay, thank you so much for being on the show. Looking forward to having you on yeah. future shows. And uh, if you have any, yeah, if you need any help or need any locations for your documentary, let me know because we did film Real Haunts Ghost Towns out in Goldfield, and uh, that's, that's all the that's Nevada one of towns. My stops. <laughs> okay, and, and I know the owner of a mine out there that he let us investigate inside the mine. Okay. Oh, that's so, that's just, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely be in touch because I can get you some contact information out there because we lived out in uh, Vegas for several years. So. Sweet. Okay. I'm all about so, it. Again, thank you very much, everybody. Yep. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Have a great day.